know how you're gonna spook them. Right, good boy. Go slowly. These are very fresh. A set of tracks there, and one here. Two actually here. I think they went inside that bush I had. The Petrus were trying to to stalk a moose. Here's the tracks. Massive feet or a hoof. I can tell by the ice. It's not ice or packed. It's very fluffy still. So it's not too old. Be really cool to find one to show you guys. Catch it on film. Bet you're taking a piss where one of the moose peed. Look, that's moose pee. That's Petrus's. One of them is quite small. Could be a family. Okay, go on this side. Some moose poop right there. The moose just jumped over this fence like it was nothing. Come, slowly. Are you moose? I know you're here somewhere. Some fresh bee. Here's a shitload of turds. More moose poop. And this is fresh. Some pee. Smell them peps? You smell it? Which way did they go? This way, right? That's right, buddy. Yeah, let's go get that moose. Here's more footprints. We're about to see them, I think. They're hiding here somewhere. There they are. There they are. Look at the three of them running. Nice and shiny. This is pretty wide as you can see. And once I rub this stuff on, you'll see the change in color. Ugh, the smell is horrible. Look at that. Black. It's a good abrasive. And it really does protect the blade, especially in conditions like this. And if you live in a dry place, I mean, you don't have to do this every day. But here, at least every two days, you gotta go through this. But it looks good now. Okay, now it's time to take care of the handle. And for that, I'm gonna use some linseed oil. When you put linseed oil on anything of made of wood like your knives or anything like axe handles and this you don't want to put a lot it's better to apply thin coats than a thick gunk 
because usually oil will dry and wrinkle it if it's too much like in excess so just a thin coat and you will be able to tell if it needs it or not I mean if it needs more coat because uh, if the wood is dry it's gonna suck the oil out of the surface pretty quickly you know you just leave it to rest for an hour or two and you'll be able to tell if you have any shiny spots or if it's dull and then at the end you just buff it the cool thing about this saw is that it doesn't even rattle so you can't hear anything so you really can walk like really quiet in the woods with this excellent design good chopper I'm not putting any effort whatsoever just letting the weight of the blade do it do its job very light taps this goes right through it this is hardwood dry hardwood my favorite knife well not bushcraft knife but my favorite Bowie usually in the morning I don't really light up the stove in the tippy so how do I cook breakfast most of the times I'll use the bushcraft essentials bush box and I'll just grab a couple of coals from my, my stove and set them on fire again. And that's enough to cook my breakfast. But sometimes, you know, I'm in a rush and I, you know, everything here takes so long that it's nice to have something that is fast to use for cooking. And so sometimes I use this multi-fuel stove to cook breakfast. I don't really eat lunch. And dinner, I never use this. I save the gas because I have to put the stove on anyway. The rain and all these strong winds will get rid of the snow within one or two days.
crazy monkey. Is all the snow gone, Babs? Hopefully it'll snow again. Entering the dark forest. Our tiny and small stream has now tripled in size with the snow melt. If you look at past Tippy episodes, you can really see, you know, this is like three or four, if not five times bigger than what it used to be. Great, free water. The only thing I'm bummed about is that the snow didn't last long, you know. I'm hoping they'll come back because the last thing I want is to have another November and December like I had you know with all that rain Ugh. that was not fun this place just looks so different without the snow yeah I want more snow that's all I have left and this is just two days of this wind and a bit of rain that's it took all the snow away and in two days pretty much freaking storm the winds out of a 40 kilometers per hour my outdoor shelter has held up I was afraid it was gonna fly away but it didn't <laughs> that's a relief the winds are starting to mellow out but it's, it's still quite nasty as you can probably tell It's nice to be in a dry place, outside. Something just happened. I just broke the, the zipper on the tippy. It shouldn't do that, honestly. I think that this is a... Uh, well, it's not as resistant as it should be, but I'm going to show you guys a way to fix this so you don't lose a zipper. So I'm removing the leather from the old broken zipper. This is the little pulley that I made. I mean, it's a good quality, or at least the brand is known to be good, YKK, but it's fixable, I think. What I'm gonna do now is MacGyver 
<laughs> a solution for this. And I'm thinking of using a normal keychain ring like this one here. It's good to always carry these. You can make bow saws with them and you can fix zippers. And it's important to have that front zipper working. Never know, the snow might come back. But it is zero degrees now anyways, it's freaking cold and with rain. See I'm shaking, I'm gonna have to make a fire. So now the idea is to pass this through here. Like so. It's a provisional solution. I mean a temporary solution. This is good. But honestly, 10 GP, I would improve on the. I mean, it's a fantastic zipper, apart from that little head. I thought it was a little too thin, the material. Where is it? Anyway, can't find it. You guys saw it. It was pretty thin. Anyway, it's fixed, and this solution works just fine doesn't even interfere with the flap so whatever it's like my wife said you know you add his cars to the tippy and that just adds character to it <laughs> it's one way to look at it
just wanted to show you some of the books that I'm reading I already showed a bunch of them but the latest one's been this one yes yes survival handbook I have the small pocket version I already had that for ages but this is like a Bible for what I'm doing it's awesome so I got plenty of stuff to do for the next coming months and the other one is by Lars Felt he's like the the grandfather of bushcraft in Sweden he's like the the top guy and this is Utliv por Vintern or uh, life outdoors in the winter I'm trying to practice my Swedish which is uh, yeah. it's got really cool illustrations and yeah all you need to know about the Swedish winter uh, it's not available in English unfortunately look at that snowshoe that is awesome I'm gonna try and make one of these but the thing is the snow keeps coming and going so but you know what I'll just make one anyway for next year super cool here's my high-tech notebook and to-do list good old pencil and paper that's how I keep organized otherwise you just sit here and waste time and wonder what to do next I'm the guy I'm the type of person that needs a to-do list I need to get organized all the time Someone asked me if I only feed my dog with dog scraps, or if I have food stored here. And the answer is uh, no, I don't feed him with just uh, dog scraps. <laughs> I have about two weeks worth of food stored. All the food that you see, well, human food that you see me giving him is just, you know, like a treat. And yeah, sometimes it's big enough to be a meal and then I don't feed him. But mostly he eats uh, Origin, a food company that makes uh, great dog food in Canada. It's 80% protein, uh, no crap on it whatsoever. So he eats really well. Good time, my friend. breakfast brother Easy burger. More snow, awesome, it's coming back. I was pretty bummed out that all the snow disappeared, but if you're gonna have another load, 
That would make things a lot easier. And more fun. Here's an easy way to wrap your cordage. You hold one of the live ends between these two fingers and then you wrap around the thumb and the little finger in an eight figure, like so. You leave about a half arm's length and that part you wrap around like this and then you have a neat packed away piece of cordage. You can do this with a, the end of your ropes on your tarps, on your hammock, any rope, even massive ones. Here you leave a little bit left here, like a loop, pass it through and then that locks it in place. There you go. I have to leave this long. Then if you need to use the cord again, you just unwrap it slowly, like so. You can keep it in your hand by lashing things instead of having a bundle all over the place. This is a lot easier. Okay, one last time at full speed. Bite it. Figure eight. Leave a little bit left on the end. There. Oops. There. It's pretty fast. And this you can pack it away in your pocket. Anywhere. There's a thing I want to talk about, which is uh, keeping your boots dry. I have uh, two sets of boots. This is the, the original Muck Boot Company Arctic Sport model. Uh, it's totally waterproof. It does the job of keeping all the external water out of your feet. What it doesn't do is keep the internal water out of your feet because it has no liners, as you can see. This is neoprene, if I'm not mistaken, all the way in. It's, it functions a little bit like a, a surfer's wetsuit. So, just like when you're surfing, you're wet, but you're warm. What happens is it keeps your sweat, your sweaty feet warm. So, you, I've had these boots uh, up to here in water, nothing went in. Uh, on minus 20 even, uh, through ice, you know, snow, whatever, you name it. And they're excellent for a one day trip. So what I do is this. I create balls, loose balls of newspaper and you stick them in all the way in your boot. But before I go to, to sleep, it's important to get the newspaper out because it's gonna really like, within the two or three hours, it's gonna be completely humid, soaked actually sometimes. So you don't want to leave that overnight because it's going to freeze once the temperature here drops, you know. So you're going to have like a ice newspaper. Okay, guys, this is about 50 km per hour gale. And you see, the JP stays in place. Uh, <laughs> pretty freaky. But uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so... Even though this is a great product, I would not recommend this for uh, winter camping. Not unless you're going for one day, it's okay. But if you're gonna sleep out, I would not use these boots. They take too much work to keep them dry. If you're gonna sleep out in nature, 
I would definitely not use this because your toes can get frostbitten. Again, I'm talking about winter, not summer, not fall. So next time I'm going to show you my other boots, which are over there. Uh, they're my favorite for uh, the winter season because they have liners. Wow. Look at the amount of water coming out of those socks. Even my feet. If I put them by the fire, you'll start seeing. They're completely wrinkly. Look. This is the problem. You can see that my feet have been moist with water. So it's always a pleasure to watch them dry and to put my nice woolly very soft socks my sleeping socks these are for hiking oh heaven occasion that the sun comes out the first thing I usually do is to wear everything from inside the tippy I bring it all out put it in the sun for a couple of hours gets rid of some of the moisture and anyway it's good to air it sometimes I'll beat it too Housekeeping.
Sometimes my water gets way too cold to drink. You know, it's like the the headache. You get like a yeah. You can see here, you got ice. Here, see. So sometimes I can feel myself getting dehydrated. I'm getting irritable. So.
cozy, huh?